good morning to you. I'm glad to welcome you this morning to spend a little time uh, studying God's Word and learning about how God would have us live this new year that we had just started. Uh, year 2021, hard to believe, isn't it? It would be an understatement to say that uh, 2020 was an unusual de uh, year because uh, actually this morning, everything that we thought we had control of now seems to have control of us in our, in our lives. Uh, and if there's anything that, uh, that we want as we go forward into 2021, it's something that we can trust, something we can uh, stand on uh, in our lives. And this morning, as we have this first Sunday in the new year, I want to say that there is something that we can stand on, something we can put our trust in, and, uh, and that is God's Word. And so I, I want to think about that a little bit this morning in our time and what God is doing uh, in our lives. And I want to challenge us to, to, to take God's message this morning and put it into practice in our lives in this new year that we have been given. Now we're looking at the first chapter of John, verses 10 through 14 this morning, and considering uh, what God wants to do uh, in our lives, and what God has planned to do in our lives, and what God has been working to get us to, to understand and to make a part of our lives. So we're going to read the, uh, just a few verses this morning, beginning with verse 10 and reading through verse 14. And, and uh, this is John's, uh, part of John's prologue. And he, and he writes, he said, He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. Now listen to this. He said, The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. There we end the reading of our lesson this morning, and then ask that God would help us understand what we, uh, we need to learn from uh, these few words that John shares with us uh, uh, today. God is sending us a message, all those folks who feel vulnerable uh, to the world around us and feel at the mercy uh, of a world that seems to be out of control. Uh, a message to all of us who have the feeling this morning that there is no, uh, no answer to the conditions that we feel and find ourselves in. But I want us to take a few minutes and listen to the words that, that, that John records and see what God is trying to say to us as we begin uh, this new year. I think there's several things that God says to us in this passage. And, and, and the first thing that God says to us is, I have a plan for your life. I have a plan for your life. I mean, everything has been so up in the air that we don't know where we're coming or going sometimes. But God knows and God says, I have a plan for your life. I have something that you want to do that I want to do in your life. And uh, we, we read in verse 12, Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. You hear that? To become children of God. In other words, to be in the family of God. I want to say something this morning that uh, you, you may or may not believe, but from the beginning of time, we are God's children. From the beginning of time, we are God's children. We may not act like it sometimes. We may not accept it sometimes. But we are God's children. And, 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 and God wants us to be a part of that family and to receive the benefits of being a part of God's 
family. I love the story about Simon Hall. Simon Hall uh, was from Nashville, Tennessee, uh, and he was a caterer there in Nashville. He was a busy, busy, busy young man, a lot of things to do. He was single, and yet he was he, he, he made a decision in 2017 to adopt two young boys who were in foster care uh, in, in the eastern Tennessee region there. And uh, his family worried about him because, I mean, I mean he already had a, a plate full. He already had as much as he could, could handle in his time and in his budget, and yet he wants to take on these two young men, and so they worry about him. And, and, and more than that, as he is starting this process and as he is applying this process to adopt these two young men, he finds out that there are four other siblings, not just these two little boys, but four other siblings that are scattered throughout East uh, Tennessee. And he feels that God wants them to be together uh, as a family. And so he decides that he wants to adopt all six of, of, of those children and uh, and his family just just think he's getting in over over his head uh, but he, he he feels that this this these six children who have been separated need to be together in a home a home where they can be nourished a home where they can be strengthened a lot a home where they can be cared for and to be those people that God wants them to be uh, in his life. So he, he uh, petitions the, the, the court to be able to, uh, to uh, adopt all six of the children. And when he was asked by the court why, uh, why he wanted to adopt these six children, he said, well, you know, in the end, uh, I knew that this was supposed, what I was supposed to be doing and I knew that they were supposed to be together. I knew that they would heal in my home. You hear that? I knew they would heal in my home. They were separated. They were, they, they, they were cast among all kinds of families. But he felt and felt led by God that if these children could be together in his home, they could be healed in all the things that they were going on uh, in their time. Uh, now, now listen, he said, I felt that they could heal in my home. From the beginning of time, God's plan was for us to all be in a home, in his home, in a home, in a family, in a relationship where we could go. Plan for us to be a part of a family where we could find healing and hope. Plan for us to be a part of a family where we've become persons that we were created to be. Since before the creation of time, uh, uh, God has worked to create an abundant life for all of humanity in our time, a place where we can grow in our time and become those persons that God wants us to be. So I want to say to you this morning that God has created us to be a part of God's family. We have an earthly family that we are part of. And, and, and when we are in that family, we can be nurtured most of the time. Sometimes there are unfortunate things that go on in families that should not. But we are created to be God's family. That's God's plan for us and the things that we're doing. Uh, so God has a plan for us in this year. A plan to be a part of God's family, our human family, and the, and, and the, the, the family of God's creation in our time. And, and it, but there's a second thing that uh, what strikes me about that, and, and it's this, that God has a plan for us because God loves us, because God loves us. God doesn't just have a plan for us to, to go here, go there, to accomplish this, to accomplish that. God has a plan because God loves us and cares for us. He said, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory the glory of the one and only who came from the Father full of grace and truth. Now, now John doesn't say that Jesus came to visit us. John says that God came to, in Christ, came to live with us. Rather than waiting for us to come to God, God came to us where we were and where we are in our lives. 
most of us start this uh, new year looking for something. Maybe it's searching for uh, a closure of this past year. Maybe we're searching for understanding our forgiveness. Uh, maybe we're searching for a second chance to make things uh, right. Uh, some of us don't even know uh, that we should have a relationship to God. Some of us don't even know that, that, that God cares for us and God loves us uh, in, our, in our time. Some of us think that God comes for those, uh, for those folks that we see at church and around who are always quoting the Bible and always smiling and always happy and always cheerful. But we think that, you know, I, I'm not ready yet. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. God's material yet. I need a lot of things to be done uh, in, in my life before I can even approach God for God's care for, for me. But we've got it all wrong, you see. J Jesus said, I didn't wait for you to come for me. God didn't wait to send Jesus for us to ask. God sent Jesus into our life because God loves us. I love the story of Janelle Perez. Uh, Janelle is a nurse practitioner in Los Angeles. She could have worked in any hospital, she could work in any uh, doctor's office, but she works on the street of uh, streets of Los Angeles, taking care of the homeless, taking care of the veterans that are there, uh, and in those streets, rather than being in a comfortable place. Rather than wearing a nurse's uniform, Janelle wears uh, jeans and t-shirts and tennis shoes. Rather than carrying her uh, medical supplies in a nice, neat leather bag, she carries it in an old, uh, well, not dilapidated, but old, worn uh, backpack so that the people will feel comfortable with her. Because many of the people that she deals with don't know how to trust people. They don't know how to, to relate to people around them. And so Janelle and her uh, entire team make every effort that they can uh, to, uh, to, to reach out to persons where they are in that time. Uh, Janelle says that many of her people won't even trust her. It takes months for they, for to even get them to allow her to take their blood pressure. And, and many of those who need medications don't trust. And so they don't allow uh, her to give them those medications. And so she said, I have to spend a lot of time just sitting and talking with them. I carry sandwiches with me. And I just sit down and I just listen to the stories that, that those folks have to tell and what they're experiencing uh, in their life. And uh, she tells a story about an Air Force veteran that she found and encountered. And he had been, uh, uh, been on the streets for over 20 years. He has suffered from schizophrenia uh, and uh, he, he just didn't trust people. And Janelle began to minister to him or try to minister to him and, uh, and he just wouldn't accept what she was offering. Finally, she got him to accept a, a place to stay. Uh, she had found him a safe place to stay, but he wouldn't take advantage of all the things that are there. He didn't want any furniture. He, he didn't want the electricity. Uh, but, but he did take the time to be inside and to be safe. Uh, and Janelle kept trying to minister to him. And every week, uh, Janelle would go and sit on the floor uh, in his apartment and just listen to his stories. And for several months, she did that. And then, and then, then there was a breakthrough one day. And he began to trust her. And, and, and Janelle was able to, to begin to take care of those things that he needed and to get him the medicine that he needed to control his schizophrenia. And, 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 and as their relationship uh, developed, uh, this young man uh, took on the, the person that he could be. His schizophrenia was controlled. He was able to, to have a relationship with, with the people around him. He found a job. He found all kind of stability in his life. He had been uh, uh, separated from his family for over 20 years. And, 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 and as Janelle was able to minister to, uh, to him, he was able to restore his relationship with his family. He was able to get a job and able to live a normal life. And somebody asked him, asked her, Why, what, what do you think? helped you reach him. And she said, well, it was because I came to him 
where he was. I didn't ask him to come to me. And I offered him not only my love, but God's love where he was. And he recognized that. And he was able to trust and able to become that person that he needed to be. You know, that's what God wants to do uh, in our life. John said, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. You see, Christ put our human flesh on and walked in our shoes and, 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 and experienced the hunger and the thirst and the frustrations and the weaknesses and the loneliness and the overwhelming pain and loss that we experience in our life. God did it so we, we could understand that we don't have to search for an unknowable God, but that we just need to accept that relationship with God. So God has a plan for us in this life. Uh, God also loves us so much that he is going to lead us uh, in this coming year if we only accept it. And then the third thing that strikes me about this lesson this morning, uh, it comes from this portion of scripture too. Uh, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. But it also comes from, uh, from, from, from Old Testament passages. And, and what I want to say is that, that God not only has a plan for us, and God not only out of, that, out of his love for us, helps us live that plan, but God will provide everything we need to live that plan if we'll allow him to do that. People say, I don't believe God provides for me. Well, I'm gonna tell you, I do. I believe that God offers us everything that we need in our life. There's a wonderful story in the Old Testament, First Kings, in fact, 1 Kings 16 and, and verse 1 Kings 17 about a, 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 a prophet, Elijah, that God has sent to speak uh, to the king of Israel. His name was Ahab, and you will probably uh, remember that he was married to Jezebel. And in chapter 16, verse 30, uh, we hear these words, Ahab, son of Omri, did more evil in the eyes of the Lord than any of those before him. He excelled and was more evil than anybody else that was there. And when, when Elijah followed God's command and went to confront uh, Ahab, Ahab tried to kill him. Uh, and, and, uh, and, 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 and Elijah uh, got away uh, and, and yet the king still pursued him. But God made a provision for him. And in uh, chapter 17, verses 2, uh, two through 6, uh, we, we hear these words. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Leave here and turn eastward and hide in Kirith Ravine, east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. So he did what the Lord told him. And he went to the Kirith Ravine, east of the Jordan, and stayed there. And the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. You know, we say, well, that's, that's okay from, for, 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 for our prophets. That's okay for, for old years and years and hundreds of years ago. But, but does it still happen today? Does God still provide for us? today. Well, I told you a story out of Nashville a uh, while ago, uh, uh, and, and now I want to share the second story out of Nashville, because on, the, on Christmas Day, uh, this past uh, Christmas, uh, in Nashville, there was a bomb that was, ex that, that was exploded and, 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 and caused massive destruction in downtown Nashville. The good news about it is that, that, that God was there to take care of those people who were there, was there. And God was near when they needed him. Now, you know, we, we begin to think, well, what do you mean? Well, uh, this massive bomb went off, called massive uh, uh, physical damage to downtown Nashville. And yet only one person was killed. And that person that was killed was a bomber himself who blew himself up when he detonated the bomb in, in, in the RV. There were only three people taken to the hospital and they had non-life-threatening injuries. There was only one police officer who suffered 
injury. And, and he had a temporary hearing loss in that time. And, and you know, there was, there was all kind of things that could have taken place, but it didn't. And I want to say this morning that I believe that God was there to take care of those folks in downtown Nashville, just like he was there to take care of Elijah, and just like he is to take care of us every day. And I think there are three reasons why uh, the damage was no more severe than it was, and the loss of life was no more severe than it was. I think, first of all, it was because of the decency of the bomber. The bomber was uh, undoubtedly uh, a disturbed person, but they had enough decency to warn the others of the impending dan danger, you know? I mean, so many, so many bombers just strike and, and take all the havoc they can. But this, this person gave a 15 minute warning to the people. So his decency contributed to the, to the, to the lack of loss of life. I also think that we, we can give God praise for six courageous police officers who rather than running from the danger, ran to the danger. Uh, they had pledged themselves to protect the people of Nashville. In a time of crisis, that's what they did. They put their own lives in jeopardy by running into the neighborhoods and warning people to evacuate. And, and, and because of that, many lives were saved. But, but I think there's a third thing, and, and, and that's this. It, it, it come, came from, comes from an interview with a couple who, who were pretty close to the RV when, when, it, was, when it was detonated. And, and, and yet they said this, we could have been killed in the blast, except for the fact that an angel dressed in a policeman's uniform appeared at our door. You know, an angel dressed in a policeman's uniform appeared at our door. That, that policeman warned them to evacuate, to get out of that area at the risk of their own life. You see, I don't think that's just a coincidence. I think that's God's provision for us in our life. God loves, has a plan for us because God loves us. And God provides all those things that we need uh, to live out that plan. Now, most of us, most of us want to start 2021 with hope. But, but we're not sure if, if we can. Uh, but there's a marvelous passage in, in Babby Mason and, and Eddie Carswell's beautiful song, Trust His Heart, that captures our hope for 2021. They, they, they write, Our Father knows what's best for us. His way, ways are not our own. So when your pathway grows dim and you just don't see Him, <clears throat> remember you're never alone god is too wise to be mistaken god is too good to be unkind so when you don't understand when you don't see his plan when you can't trace his hand trust his heart trust his heart you know after what we've experienced it's hard to know what's coming our way is it the light at the end of the tunnel or is it the headlight uh, of an oncoming freight train? I'm going to take God at God's word for and, and believe that it's a light of the end of the tunnel. Why? Because I believe that our, uh, out of love, God has a plan for our lives. I believe that out of love, God loves every person ha and has provided and continues to provide everything we need to follow that plan and to become the person that we need to be. I don't know about you, but I'm going to continue to believe that God works in our lives. And in 2021, no matter what we saw in 2020, God has something for us that's great. God has something special planned, and God is just waiting for us to accept that. Until then, I'm going to follow the advice of the medical personnel that God has provided and has uh, trained and given to us. Until then, I'm going to continue to believe that God loves us and God cares for us. And I'm going to trust 
in God's heart. How about you? How about you? Let's pray. Father, we're so grateful for today and we're grateful that we have entered a new year, Lord, 2021. Wow. 2020 went so fast and yet it went so slow. And Lord, uh, we still suffer the shock from that. But Lord, you have something else planned. I just pray, Lord, that I can, can, can hold on to that plan, oh Lord, that I can hold on to your love and that my brothers and sisters can walk with me, O oh Lord, and you through this coming year and experience the joy that you have planned for us. Father, we give you praise for all these things. We ask them in Jesus' name and for our sake, O oh Lord. Amen. Well, I don't know about you, but I am enjoying 2021 already. And I know that God has something great planned for us and for our world. If we will only accept that. You know, there's only one thing that can separate us from God, and that's us. If we choose not to accept what God offers, then God is gracious, and God does not inflict that upon us. But this year, let's accept what he has, and let's trust him and trust his heart for our lives. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful week ahead. Amen.